a very good afternoon to everyone so today we have a demo on cerebrum this is one of the largest part of the brain we have the external features related with the cerebrum it consists of three poles that is known as the frontal pole on the back side occipital pole this is known as the temporal pole i repeat frontal pole this is known as the, the occipital pole and this is known as the temporal pole then it is having three surface the outer one this is something known as suprolateral surface of the brain and on the either side you can see the suprolateral surface of the brain of the two cerebral hemisphere same how if i'll take a section here from the the middle aspect it divides the cerebrum into two half that is the right half of the cerebral hemisphere and the left side of the cerebral hemisphere and the brain which you can see this is known as the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere and from the inferior aspect one more surface is there that is known as the inferior aspect or the inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere this inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere is divided into two parts that is known as the orbital surface and on the back side this is known as the tentorial surface right i repeat this is known as the suprolateral surface of the brain from the outside and this is known as the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere and from the lower aspect this is known as the inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere which is divided into two surface this is known as the, the orbital uh, surface and this is known as the tentorial surface same how there are three borders the border which you can see here this is known as the supromedial border and same how from the outer aspect the, here we have the border known as the superciliary border and this border is known as the infralateral border same how you can see here this is known as the infromedial border but infromedial we can say that this is something related with orbital area so we can say this is known as the in uh, medial orbital border and here we have the border that is known as parahippocampal border on the medial aspect again this is known as medial occipital border so i repeat again this is known as medial supromedial border this is known as the the infralateral but infralateral we can say the front one is known as the superciliary border this is known as the infralateral border from the medial aspect this is known as medial orbital border here we have the border that is known as parahippocampal border and same how here we have the border that is known as the medial occipital border so between the supramedial and the inframedial border this surface is known as the medial surface between the supramedial border and the infralateral border this surface is known as the suprolateral surface and between the infromedial and infralateral border this surface is known as the orbital uh, sorry the inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere now let's know about the main sulcus and gyrus that is present in each cerebral hemisphere if this is known as suprolateral sur surface of the cerebral hemisphere we have to see the sulcus and gyrus present over here same how the sulcus and gyrus that is present in the medial surface and same how the sulcus and gyrus that is present in the inferior aspect also so this is known as the suprolateral surface of the the brain so let's know about the main cerebral sulci which divides the cerebrum into frontal lobe the parietal lobe occipital lobe and the temporal lobe so let's know the main sulcus this is something known as the central sulcus of ronaldo and the central sulcus of ronaldo begins by cutting the supromedial border of the cerebral hemisphere so this is known as supramedial border of the cerebral hemisphere and you can see here this arises by cutting the supramedial border of the cerebral hemisphere that is 1 cm behind the midpoint between the frontal and occipital pole so this is known as the frontal pole this is known as the occipital pole this is known as the midpoint so from the midpoint 1 cm behind this central sulcus arises and the central sulcus forms the main boundary between the motor area in front so this one will be known as the motor area and on the back side this is known as the sensory area so we will be dealing about the motor and sensory area later now let's know about the next sulcus that is known as the lateral sulcus so this is known as lateral sulcus of silvius so it has the stem and the three rami and the stem arise from the inferior surface of cerebral hemisphere this is known as the inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere and this is known as the stem of the lateral sulcus so now 
the stem here divides into three rami the one which is going on the posterior aspect this is known as the the posterior rami of the lateral sulcus this is known as the anterior horizontal anterior horizontal sulcus and this is known as the anterior the the ascending sulcus so with the help of this sulcus again you can say that the the cerebrum is divided into the anterior one is known as the frontal this is known as the temporal lobe now let's know about the other sulcus that is known as the parieto occipital sulcus this sulcus is known as the parieto occipital sulcus i'll show you here in this one this is something known as the parieto occipital sulcus and which is mostly seen from the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere and this the parieto occipital sulcus goes towards the suprolateral surface of the the brain so this is known as the parieto occipital sulcus same how what we have to know here is uh one more sulcus that is known as the calcarine sulcus this is known as middle surface of the cerebral hemisphere and this sulcus is known as the calcarine sulcus which we will see in the middle surface of the cerebral hemisphere so i repeat here this is known as the central sulcus this is known as the posterior rami of the lateral sulcus posterior rami of the lateral sulcus and this is known as the parieto occipital sulcus over here and what we have to know here is imagine that this is known as the occipital pole 5 cm just in front of the occipital pole we have the area known as preoccipital notch so from the preoccipital notch let's draw imaginary line from here till the the parieto occipital sulcus right just behind this area this area is known as the occipital lobe right so let's know again area just in front of the central sulcus is known as frontal lobe area between the central sulcus and the the parieto occipital sulcus is known as the parietal lobe and area which is passing from the the preoccipital notch and the parieto occipital sulcus just behind that this, this is known as the occipital lobe and area which is just below the lateral sulcus is known as the temporal lobe now let's know about the main sulcus and gyri which is present in frontal parietal occipital and in the temporal lobe so if this is known as the central sulcus now can you see here just in front of the central sulcus this sulcus is known as precentral sulcus so we are dealing about the frontal lobe so this is precentral sulcus now bit area between the or we can say the gyrus which is present between central sulcus and precentral sulcus is known as precentral gyrus so this is known as precentral gyrus just entered to the precentral sulcus we have other sulcus gyrus of the frontal lobe can you see here this is known as superior frontal sulcus this is known as inferior frontal sulcus so with the help of the two sulcus that is superior and inferior frontal sulcus the frontal lobe is divided into three gyrus so this is known as superior frontal gyrus this is known as the middle frontal gyrus and this is known as inferior frontal gyrus again the inferior frontal gyrus is divided into three part so with the help of anterior horizontal and anterior ascending rami so this is known as anterior horizontal and this is known as anterior ascending rami so it divides the inferior frontal gyrus into three area let's say that this is area number 1 this area number 2 and area number 3 right so this area number 1 or the the area this one is known as pars orbitalis now this area is known as the pars triangularis and the area this one is known as the pars opercularis so with the help of this two rami the inferior frontal gyrus is divided into pars orbitalis pars triangularis and pars opercularis now let's know about the gyrus and sulcus which is present in the temporal lobe if this is a temporal lobe we have the two main sulcus this is known as superior temporal sulcus and this is known as inferior temporal sulcus which divides the temporal lobe into superior temporal gyrus the middle temporal gyrus and inferior temporal gyrus gyrus right same how if this is known as central sulcus just behind the central sulcus this sulcus is known as the post central sulcus now area between the the central sulcus and the post central sulcus is known as the post central gyrus so this is post central gyrus right and we are dealing about parietal lobe 
right now can you see here this is something known as intraparietal sulcus so this intraparietal sulcus divides the parietal lobe into superior parietal lobules and inferior parietal lobules now let's see about the occipital lobe right so occipital lobe can you see this is known as occipital lobe now the area that is just behind the the parieto occipital uh, the sulcus and the preoccipital notch this is known as the occipital lobe so in the occipital notch we have the lunate sulcus this sulcus the half moon shaped sulcus this is known as the lunate sulcus and can you see here from the posterior aspect the sulcus which is coming here towards the lunate sulcus is known as post calcarine sulcus now one more area you can see as one more sulcus you can see here this is known as lateral occipital sulcus this is lateral occipital sulcus and this lateral occipital sulcus divides the the occipital lobe into superior and inferior occipital gyrus and uh, we have the term known as again the central lobe so this is something if i'll reflect this lateral sulcus we can see the here one separate lobe that is known as the uh, central lobe also known as insula so let's recap everything this is known as central sulcus pre central sulcus post central sulcus so this is known as pre central gyrus and this is known as post central gyrus same how this is known as superior frontal gyrus this is known as the middle frontal gyrus and this is known as the inferior frontal gyrus so we have the two sulcus this is known as superior frontal sulcus this is known as inferior frontal sulcus so inferior frontal sulcus again divided into three part this is known as the pars orbitalis pars triangularis and pars opercularis with the help of anterior horizontal and anterior ascending rami this is known as the lateral sulcus and this area where the lateral sulcus is divided into three parts that is the three rami this is known as the point of sylvius so this is again temporal lobe so the temporal lobe again we have the two sulcus this is known as superior temporal inferior temporal sulcus so this is superior temporal a gyrus middle temporal gyrus and inferior temporal gyrus and this is something known as the parietal lobe so this is known as intraparietal sulcus intraparietal sulcus so this is superior and inferior parietal the lobules and this is known as the the parieto occipital sulcus just behind the parieto occipital sulcus this is occipital lobe this is known as the the lunate sulcus this is post calcarine sulcus and this is known as lateral occipital sulcus so we have superior and inferior occipital lobules will be there now let's add some more point here this is known as lateral sulcus now the area or the sulcus where lateral sulcus is ending here this is something known as the supra marginal gyrus and here this is something known as the angular gyrus thank you